Hey Alex, it's great to see you. Thanks for joining me today. How are you doing? Oh, really good, thank you. It's really nice to be here with you. <laughs> um, right, so uh, for the listeners, Alex is a friend of mine. I met Alex, ooh, is it getting on for two years ago? Yeah, I would say so, yep. yeah. And we met in San Diego and I'd never met her before and we shared a bed for the week. <laughs> Um, to put it into context, <laughs> we, were, we were both out there for the same event. There was a, um, an online marketing event that was happening, a big one out in San Diego, and we, there was a group of us that shared a house. So it was, and it was cool. So we became friends from that week, um, and we stayed friends ever since. And, and Alex is uh, a girl after my own heart. She has been looking to change her life and do something that really uh, feels purposeful. And she wants to be her own boss. She wants to control her own destiny. And uh, she's had, a, she's had a, a nice, interesting journey over the last few years. So um, I think I'll hand over to Alex. And um, so we'll welcome Alex. And I'm sure the listeners are going to love to hear your story. Thank you. Um, yeah, I guess it goes back quite far, really. I mean, it's, it's one of those journeys. It's not been a straight line, let's put it that way. And uh, there's been a lots of, like curves in the in the road um so i suppose i have to go back to around 2012 um when i just basically was in a place where i was totally burnt out working you know the kind of normal corporate nine to five but i say that and it obviously wasn't nine to five it was a lot longer hours um and i was exhausted and i just felt really um, I was miserable, you know, I remember just having no energy at the end of the day to do anything that I wanted to do. I remember that I would just kind of drink my sorrows away on a Friday or Saturday night and then Sunday was just like, I was knackered and would just sleep <laughs> and, and then the week would start again. And after a period of time of doing that, I was uh, like, there was something inside of me that was literally just like screaming no like you this is not the way to live like I cannot continue like this for another uh, however many years it would have been you know another probably 30 40 years what job um, was it? sorry what job was it well so I used to work in television production mm. um so I was you know like when I left university I was really I was always really passionate about music and I wanted to be working in the music industry and I ended up working at MTV so it was awesome you know I had some really fun times and I um, climbed my way up the ladder not not with MTV but um, as a freelancer I ended up getting into TV production and then you kind of move around different companies for a project that's how it works in television production and the first few years was really fun you know I had energy I was young I was driven I was excited to live this like glamorous London media life and you know I was going to parties with celebrities and that kind of thing but after a few years and as I kind of got higher up the ladder it just started to lose its shine and I was really um I was really just kind of not that not I wasn't really that passionate about what I was doing I guess like the kind of tv shows that we were making they weren't anything that particularly um felt meaningful to me and I just found that the amount of hours I was having to work it just took away from any other side of my life you know like my health went downhill I didn't have time to have relationships um I, I, I did have a relationship for some of that and that went downhill um you know I just didn't get to spend time with my friends and I remember one of the really pivotal points for me was when I just got this new project and it was actually quite good money and I it was one of the highest paid um roles that I'd had to date and I was you know like feeling kind of like okay maybe this is going to be a new turning point like it was a new company maybe things will be different here and I just remember that the same old stuff started to happen where I'd be in the office till like nine ten o'clock at night I was having to cancel appointments with friends and it was on one of those occasions where one of my best friends oldest friend from school who I've known since I was like 11 um 
we had <coughs> we had arranged excuse me had arranged to go out and I had to text her and say to her I'm still at work like that, there's no point coming like I'm not getting out of here for at least another few hours because when you were on production you have to stay until the job's done and the role I was in was always the first person in office and the last person to leave because I was sorting out all of the logistics all of the travel all of the equipment and all that kind of stuff um, so yeah it was on that occasion and my friend actually said to me just quit <laughs> I was like what and she was like this is insane like I haven't you're so unhappy, you know, and like the brief conversation that we had, she, cause she knew me so well. And she was like, come and meet me. Like we're, we're going to talk about it. And I don't think we met that night because I couldn't, but we did meet shortly afterwards. And yes, yeah, it was kind of like she gave, she opened up my eyes and it's almost like she gave me permission. It's like, what? I can actually quit? <laughs> you, you mean I can do that? Like, because I think there's such a stigma, you know, around, around that. And I guess I was afraid and you know, obviously my mind is like, well, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? How am I going to pay my rent? Who's going to employ me again if I quit this job? And obviously all of that went through my head. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, yeah. So anyway, I ended up having a good conversation with her. I ended up quitting that job and I ended up moving back in with my mum for a few months. And I just decided to give myself time. And I didn't, I had no clue what I was going to do. Um, I really didn't know. I didn't have any answers, but I just knew that I needed time and I needed to rest because I was, I was so exhausted. I mean, I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown, you know, I was high anxiety all the time, mega stress, like really like burnt out, you know, and so I just had to take time to go and rest. And the only place I could kind of do that and not worry about bills and all that kind of stuff was with my mum. Um, so I did that for a couple of months and during that time I started to think about what I'd actually like to do and what would be something that would, you know, feel more meaningful, something that would light me up. And I started to think about training to become a yoga teacher. Now, I didn't actually train immediately and this is why I say my journey is like not a straight line because I didn't, I had these massive limiting beliefs that I wasn't good enough to be a yoga teacher. You know, um, in my mind, a yoga teacher was like skinny and blonde and could wrap <laughs> their feet around their head. <laughs> like. Yeah, like it seems stupid now, but you know, I really didn't feel that I, I was like me, a yoga teacher, like no. Um, but it was the only thing at that time that I could really think of that I felt passionate about. And the reason for that was because it was that when I went to yoga class, it was probably the only thing that I, even though I didn't do it regularly, but that I would fit in during my busy schedule. And when I did get to go, it was like the only moment in my day where I would feel any sense of peace. Okay. So it was so special to me. I wanted to share that with other people. Um, anyway, I didn't train to become a yoga teacher at that point. And I actually went off and traveled around the world and <laughs> decided to go and train to work on super yachts instead. Somebody had told me about this, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and I was like, okay, like I, the other thing I love is travel. And so I decided to go and do this because I heard that you could, you know, travel and earn really good money. Um, so I went and did that for a while. That was a bit of a disaster. <laughs> what job did you do on that? So I was a stewardess. Right. Um, so essentially that basically means you're like making beds, you're doing the washing, the ironing, maybe you're doing a bit of waitressing, serving food and drinks. I was like the, the newest member and obviously like uh, the less experienced member. So I didn't get to do any of the waitressing. So I ended up like basically in the 
uh, I can't, oh, the mess, that's what it's called. I've forgotten all of the terminology, but in the crew mess, which is the very lowest part of the boat, I was basically in there in the little washing room ironing clothes for like 14 hours a day. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so this idea of like living some kind of glamorous lifestyle was total fantasy. Um, and it, it made no sense to me because, yes, we got to go to some nice places, but I was on that boat for about six months. And during that time, I, I think I had no more than like maybe four or five days on land. So if we were on the boat, we were working. If the owners were on the boat or, they get, or there were guests on the boat, then we were we were working so the only time we got any days off or any rest was if if they went away for a while or if they went out for the whole day but even then there were things to do so we got very minimal um free time like even less than when i was working in the tv career right <laughs> so like, what is going on here you this didn't learn your lesson did you I didn't learn my <laughs> lesson no um and uh <laughs> Yeah, we had, you know, I had like a few days on land. And, and then when we had those days on land, all of the other members of the crew, they would just head straight to the local, to, to like some glamorous bar. And they were kind of acting as though they were almost like as rich as these people who owned the yacht, yet not living that lifestyle at all. And for me, I was like, this is insane. Like I've got one day on land. The last thing I want to do is go and spend the whole day drinking champagne. And I mean, yeah, that sounds nice, maybe in the evening, <laughs> but I'd like to go and see some of this country that, you know, that's, that's why I wanted to do this so I could explore and see new places. And so I very quickly realized that it wasn't the right industry for me. The, the kind of, I just feel like the values of the people that were that I that I met anyway. I'm not saying that for everyone, but the values of the people that I met did not line up with my values. So I was really not very happy on that boat. Um, so I came home, and this is all you know. This is like probably a few years where I, I travelled for a bit, and then I worked on a boat, and I travelled for a bit, and then I came home again. Like, okay, I really haven't learned my lesson. Um, what am I going to do now? And during that time when I've been traveling, I had had a, um, a little bit of experience of, so this is a whole nother story, um, <laughs> that happened, it happened before the boat actually, because it was kind of like, I went and did some training and then I went to Costa Rica and then I got the job on the boat. So while I was in Costa Rica, I got offered um, a job in a hostel there just because I'd, I'd kind of stuck around longer than most people do. And that was because I'd met a guy. <laughs> so I, I, like, I was traveling, I didn't have any particular schedule and I ended up staying at this one hostel for a few weeks. And after you know, a week or so of being there, the owners said to me, oh, um, would you like to work here a little bit? And then you, know, you can spend some <laughs> money. Um, and so I was like, yeah, that sounds good. And so I decided that um, during that time, it was probably one of the happiest uh, like job roles that I'd had. And the reason I loved it so much was because all I was doing was like, when people would arrive, I would like greet them. I would talk to them about their travels, where they'd been, where they were going, you know, check them in, show them around, make them feel at home, make them breakfast in the morning, that kind of thing. And, and it was fairly chilled. It was a very chilled atmosphere. There was no stress. Um, and so when I came back after all that stuff with the boat, came back to the UK, um, I started thinking, well, maybe if I could do something like that in England, that would be something I would enjoy. And I did some research and I had stayed before at, I'm sure you would have heard of um, the Youth Hostel Association. Yeah. So it's a company, a charity that we have here in the UK. And they have hostels, which are effectively low budget accommodation. Um, not the type of hostel that's like for homeless people. Sometimes people get confused. Um, but you know, you would have schools would go and stay there, couples would stay there, walk, hikers, you know, anyone could stay there. Basically like a cheap hotel. 
and they are a charity and their ethos is all about getting people out of the city and into the countryside and obviously the people that go there are these people that like to explore and travel and that kind of thing so they ended up working there um and but like because it because I enjoyed that experience in Costa Rica and I thought oh maybe you know it will be the same here and although it was okay for a while it was very different to Costa Rica and I guess that's because of the culture you know there's a lot more red tape a lot more protocols a lot more health and safety a lot mm. more kind of like mundane things that we had to deal with um so Fast forward in for like, a, a, how long did I work with them? Like maybe, maybe it was a year or so. It might have been a bit more than that. But I ended up basically getting a slip disc in my back. And this was kind of like, again, one of those pivotal turning points. Um, the, the pain had been getting gradually worse and worse um, over a period of months. And... I hadn't really been getting the proper like help that I needed. Like every time I would go to the doctor, they would just give me pills. Um, and because I was work working quite busy hours and shift work and stuff like that, um, I again wasn't taking care of myself as well as I as well as I should be really. Um, so I ended up. It was around my thirtieth birthday, I believe or maybe it was 31st, I'm not sure. Um, but I ended up basically having to uh, basically admit defeat and, and decide that I, again, had to quit this job and go home to my mum. So it was really demoralising because I'd got to the point where if I was standing for more than like an hour, I was in pain. You know, my job, I was on my feet all day long. And even sitting down, I, I was in pain. So it, it had got really bad and I had neglected to, I guess, look after it as much as I could um, because I'd always put work first, you know, I was putting my responsibilities at work first. Anyway, so I, I mean, I went off sick. I didn't quit straight away. I went off sick. I had to just rest and try and figure all of that out. But eventually it led to me quitting that job. Um, and it was while I was on the osteopath's table, like getting some treatment on my back, that I had the realization that I had to go and train to be a yoga teacher. Like even though at that stage, I was in absolutely no fit state to even do yoga, let alone teach it. <laughs> But she was saying to me, she was asking me about my work and she was saying, you know, what is it that you do and, and how have you ended up in this state? Because for, for the injury that I had, it was actually quite severe for somebody of my age and they were very surprised. Like everyone I saw kept being like, well, it's so unusual. You're so young. You shouldn't have this yet. Um, and she said to me, you know, you really need to start thinking about becoming self-employed so that you can control how much time you spend working, how much time you're on your feet, how much time you're sitting down, you know, all those kind of things so that you can look after your health first. And I think until you have a kind of health scare, like, or something that, that can really affect the rest of your life, you know, we do kind of just think we're a bit invincible. <laughs> we don't really worry so much. Um, and so it was really eye-opening for me. And I'd never really considered that. I'd never considered self-employment before, really. Um, and in that moment, I was like, ah, oh, I'm back, back where I was, like, two years ago with this idea of training to become a yoga teacher and I was like okay like I'm and I kind of made a commitment to myself that as soon as I'm well enough then I'm going to do my teacher training and so it became a um almost like the reward you know and it was like the goal that drove me to like really get better um I, I basically avoided having an operation like that was the, the medical advice was to have an operation you know I really didn't want to go down that route so I saw all the alternative therapies did really gentle yoga like physio and over a period of time and again because I just stopped working and actually reduced the stress in my life um, I did start to get better and 
then I guess it was about a year later that I went off to, to India and to do my yoga teacher training. So it took you a year to get you back better? I think it was like probably about it was about four months before there was like significant improvement and then it was probably about six to seven months before I was able to start working again and actually be more active but then the extra months was at one for me to like make sure I really was healthy enough because the yoga teacher training is not it, you know, it's pretty hardcore there's lots of um, yoga it can be really physically challenging and um, and also I think just because of the timing of the training it might have been a few months extra um, so yeah I and then I finally went to India I did my yoga teacher training and it was you know I think I just was like why did I wait so long <laughs> like what was I doing you know like all the fear and everything just kind of held me back um and it, it's funny because as soon as I made that decision I literally felt like all the opportunities all the doors opened like everything flowed really easily whereas when I'd been on these other paths, like everything had been hard, everything had been a struggle. Like I felt like I was always banging my head against a brick wall, you know? And I really take that, I really learned that lesson now of like, when it feels hard, it's like, I'm not supposed to be here, that's why, you know? <laughs> um, we all do that, don't we? We think, you know, we sort of grow, we're sort of taught really hard work is, is where it's at and you feel like if you if you are um, if you're not stressed almost that you're probably winging it or you're probably not exerting yourself enough and all that and it's crazy isn't it yeah exactly and I'm still learning that lesson I have to remind myself that every day um but yeah as soon as I actually went and did my training it was like you know, I actually felt the healthiest I've ever felt in my whole life during that one month training. And we were sometimes doing yoga for like six or seven hours a day. So it was physically demanding for, for someone who'd been, you know, not doing that kind of activity all the time. Um, but we were also on like a vegan, sugar-free, gluten-free diet. You know, it was we had juicing days, and I and it, I felt incredible. Um, but when I came back from India, I basically um, literally just opportunities open. Like I ended up getting um, a job in Morocco to teach yoga at a surf school, and that was like my first like official yoga teaching role. Um, so that was like really scary, but really exciting as well. And I got to go and just get over all of those initial fears. And I was teaching every single day. Oh, I think I had one day off a week, but it was like morning and evening classes for people who were basically there on a surfing holiday. And it was there to like, as an extra to, you know, help them stretch and that kind of thing. And so I did that for a few months. And during that time, I just was thinking about, okay, when this is over, I need to put some roots down. I need to, you know, I need to decide where I'm going to be so that I can really grow my yoga business. And because um, I'd been such a nomad before that, you know, all that traveling that I'd done and being on the super yacht, I hadn't had a base really for a good few years. And during that time, I decided that I was going to move to Bristol. And it was a whole bunch of synchronicities that happened. I didn't know anything about Bristol. I think I knew one person who I'd worked with at the YHA who lived in Bristol. But Why Bristol? Yeah, exactly. Good question. <laughs> right? That was what my mind was asking. Why Bristol? But it kept coming up in conversation. And I... I had been asking, I'd basically been saying, okay, like, where am I going to go? And I grew up in London, but I didn't want to be in London. I knew that much. I knew that I wanted to be somewhere a bit smaller, a bit, um, I'm not quieter because Bristol's still a big city, but just not so, I guess, stressed and busy as London. I was at this point in my life, I was like doing everything to eliminate stress, you know? <laughs> um, 
And I kept meeting people during this phase where I was trying to decide where I would go. And Bristol kept coming up in conversation. And until that point, it had never been something that had come up in conversation. So it was noticeable, you know? I was like, huh. Like I'd meet someone who lived in Bristol or I'd meet someone who went to university in Bristol or I'd meet someone whose sister was living in Bristol and it just kept happening. I was like, okay, I think I need to go and check out Bristol. So I, I got home and I, I went, I did go to Bristol for a day and I fell in love with the place in, it's full of like, kind of creative people, alternative people, lots of yogis there. Um, and yeah, I fell in love with it and was like, okay, yeah, this feels really good. And then I was trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to make this shift? You know, because essentially I don't know anybody here. I have no job. I want to start a yoga business and pretty low on money because of the last few years of everything that happened with my back and spending all my money on the training and, um, and my mind was kind of looking at these like limited ideas of how we could solve this solution, right? And my mind is saying, okay, well, you're probably going to have to go and still live with your mum for a while. You're probably going to have to get a part-time job or a job or whatever and save up um, and, and then move to Bristol when you've got some money and, all, you know, all these kind of things. And I think I'd been back for about five days and I literally had an opportunity land in my lap to buy a existing yoga business in Bristol. And it was so random because there's no reason for that to land on my lap, you know, and it did. And the thing was, I didn't have any money to buy this yoga business. So there's a part of me that's like, oh, this is amazing. And then there's another part of me that's like, yeah, but I, you know, I don't have any money for this. But I was so excited about the possibility of it. And I was so sure that I was supposed to go to Bristol and teach yoga that I decided to look into it. I thought, what's the harm in sending an email? What's no harm in having a conversation? So I started emailing with this lady had a conversation back and forth she invited me to go to bristol and have you know more of a conversation and and so i decided to do that all the while i'm not sure how i can buy this business um and then i can't remember the time frame but it wasn't long it was like talking days and weeks you know nothing longer than that um, and it, one day, literally a check arrived in the post that would cover the business and also a little like, so I had something to go there and actually live on initially. And I was just like dumbfounded, like, oh my God. So like when I say doors opened, like... Where did the check come from? Well, so essentially what happened was my mum had this pension that she had totally forgot about. She didn't even know she had, right? <laughs> and she has some that she knew about. And then she had this other one that apparently she'd forgotten about. And it had come to the end of its term or something like that. And so they had sent her, I don't know what had happened, but my mum got this check in the post. It was a lot more than what I ended up with. But then my mum, knowing the situation that I was in, she was like, I, I can now help you like if you want me to help you I can loan you the money that you need and that wouldn't have been an option before because my mum didn't have that kind of money just spare hanging around you know um so yeah it was uh very very random <laughs> and I ended up moving to Bristol within it was a really short amount of time so they it was I remember it was towards Christmas time because I'd come back from Morocco just a bit before Christmas so that I could be with family and everything for Christmas and then all this happened within a few weeks before Christmas and I moved to Bristol at the beginning of January and started teaching yoga in the new school term when the kids went back to school in like the first second week of January so it was like a whirlwind of like, oh, I've got to come back. I'm going to have to get a job. I'm going to have to save money. It's going to take ages to make this transition. And it was no more than a couple of months, like the whole thing. Um, 
yeah, so that's kind of like the the kind of story of how I ended up in Bristol teaching yoga and it you know like I, I mean it, I loved it like I was so happy you know I was really loving um, sharing this knowledge and helping people with their well help help teaching kids this you know stuff that you know is way beyond stretching um, and also I was teaching adults as well so I was also really loving sharing it with them um yeah hang on excuse me one second <laughs> um so yeah I ended up doing that for a few years and I mean it's just crazy my story really when I tell it like this it's like there's so many twists and turns you know um and after a few years of teaching in in Bristol I'd got to the point where I, I wanted to learn like more knowledge I wanted to um, kind of dive deeper into yoga studies and stuff like that and I ended up like having a whole another bunch of synchronicities that got me a job in an ashram in India and so I then went to India and lived in an ashram over there for it was about 18 months I think in total what did you do with your yoga round? Did you sell it? No. So at that stage, I had teachers covering for me. So after about a year, um, I think after about a year of teaching, I was so, I, there was too much demand for the business for me to manage. Like that's how quickly it grew. It started off with like, because the business, it was like part-time when I took it over because the lady who was selling it to me had scaled it down because she had other responsibilities. So I had like maybe three or four classes a week when I started. And then within a year, I was having to hire another teacher to help take more classes on. Um, so it grew really quickly. Um, but what I did when I went away is, yeah, I, I mean, I wasn't doing any marketing to grow it, but we kept all the existing classes and I had people covering them for me because I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen in India. I didn't know if I was going to like it. I didn't know how long I was going to be there. So I didn't want to just like get rid of everything that I'd built in Bristol. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a whole nother story, like a whole nother story of synchronicity of how that happens because I was literally on my mat meditating one day and I was trying to visualize what I wanted from this like I knew that I wanted to go and do my training I knew that I wanted to learn from a like traditional like Indian master like someone where yoga was like in their in their family in their lineage um, and I, I, but, but it's really overwhelming, right? There's so many yoga schools and trainings and things out there that I didn't know. Um, I didn't really know where to begin. So I just meditated on it. And in my meditation that day, an, a name of a school popped into my head. And it was, it was a school that I had heard about during a really brief conversation years ago um, when I had gone to do a 10 day silent meditation retreat. And I'd had a really short conversation with somebody at the end as we were leaving. And she'd mentioned this yoga school, never heard of them before, never followed up or knew in, or heard of them since. So I had forgotten about it, but it popped into my mind on that day. So I went online and Googled them and found out about them. And, the, you know, I opened up the website and the first thing I see is like this little Indian guy with big beard, long hair, like wearing the, I don't even know what it's called, but like basically kind of like cloth, you know. <laughs> I'm not explaining it very well, sorry. but <laughs> um, and, um, and I ended up approaching them and... and long story short um they had a job for a ashram manager that they were looking to fulfill and i wanted to go there and like kind of learn more but also also 
teach and, and work. You know, I didn't want to just go as a student. And so we had this conversation and yeah, they were looking for an ashram manager. And because of my experience at the Youth Hostel Association before, it made me like the perfect candidate because not only was I a yoga teacher, but I also had experience of like supervising and managing kind of low budget accommodation, which is what an ashram is. Um, and so it's interesting because when I look back, even though some of those experiences weren't great, I can see that they were lining me up for like where I needed to be and the experience I needed to have. Um, yeah, so went to India, did more studies, more training, um, helped them with managing the ashram and also ended up teaching teacher trainings as well for students, you know, for people who wanted to train to be a yoga teacher. Um, and I came back from India, when did I come back? 2000, I guess that would have been the year before I met you. Yeah, the year before I met you. So I came back from India 2018. And around that time, I was trying to figure out how I could make money from anywhere. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because I'd becomes like I, I had all these contacts and I had all this work in India that I could continue to do if I wanted to. But I also was, you know, had spent quite a long time at that point away from home and I wanted to spend more time at home with friends and family. And so I was in this situation now where during, you know, during that time, the, the business in Bristol had wound down a little bit because obviously I wasn't there to like do all the marketing and, you know, my students had found other teachers and that kind of thing. Um, and I wasn't convinced, that, um, that's a whole other story. But anyway, I, I basically needed to, um, to, to have a way of making income no matter where I was. So I was in this situation where I knew that like, okay, I can go to Bristol and I can teach and earn money there. I can go to India and I can teach and earn money there. But all of it was dependent on me still trading my time for money. Um, and that was the thing that became really apparent to me. It was like the next, you know, the next stage. Like initially it was like, okay, like I need to be self-employed. And I was like figuring all of that out. And, and, and then I realized, well, actually, if I really want more kind of freedom and how I spend my time is like really down to me, then actually I need to find a way to make some kind of passive income or like where I'm not restricted to having to be in one location, having to be trading my time for money. So I was kind of in that place of where I was like, okay, what's next for me? And, you know, what do I, what do I want for my, for my future? Um, and that was around the time that I discovered SFM and obviously met you and then entered into this whole world of online marketing and, yeah, started to learn learn all about that. So yeah, that's a very long <laughs> story of like how I kind of got roughly where I am today. <laughs> it's kind of amazing listening to the, the turn of events and, and the synchronicities and what happened. It was just like reading a law of attraction book. I mean, you must have, um, you must have had the power to, you know, for that all to happen. And like you say, to have had the youth hostel experience when, you know that was just amazing wasn't it to be able to go and fulfill that role um so so you came back from india obviously you were missing home and friends etc and then realized you needed another way to earn money and, it, and that ended up being online um what drove that really was it just a case of like you said i know the trade in the time for money but I mean, you've had a pretty exciting background in terms of like all these different places, countries you've been and all that. You know, I'm sitting here quite jealous, to be honest, because I'm like, <laughs> what have I done with my life? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, but, but I guess I know, I know you've mentioned a couple of times about not having a base and stuff like that as well. Mm. So, so when you found SFM and you, and you started to do the online stuff, what, what sort of happened next? Because I know that's 
been a bit of a weavy, wavy one for you as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think to answer the first question, I think the main thing for me at that time was I wanted the ability to earn money from anywhere. And the main reason for that was because I just didn't know where I was going to be. I, I didn't have like, I don't have kids. I don't have a partner. So I didn't have something holding me in one place. And I have that urge to travel and explore. But I also love my family and friends, you know. So I needed more freedom, basically, more flexibility. Um, so I would say that that was the main driving thing. Um, yeah, so I started um, doing all of the SFM training. I built my own affiliate business, you know, it took a little while to get it going. Um, and then uh, I guess after, so that, that would have been in like July, 2018. And, but I didn't start marketing really until kind of like, I did a little bit early 2019, which is around the time I met you. And that was really like my very first like test in the waters. And then I kind of stopped and reshot things and like improved, improved things and then properly started marketing in April. And yeah, very quickly started making sales, um, which was really exciting. You know, it was like I'd been learning for so long, like learning all these new skills and setting up the kind of back end and all this kind of thing. And and um, it was really exciting to actually start seeing to to see that starting to grow. Um, but I was on a very, I had very limited funds, um, and so I was on a short timeline with like okay this is how much money I've got to spend on marketing and when that's gone it's gone kind of thing um so during so I I just I kept like working on the business and I kept uh, you know learning and growing and and all of that but in the back of my mind I also had a deadline of like okay by this date and I think it was September I was saying to myself by the beginning of September I need I need to have some kind of other regular income if things haven't like really taken off with the business, even though they were growing, you know, it was still, it was like a trickle. Um, and so I had in my mind, okay, you know, I will start looking for a job like a month or so before that. And, um, you know, that was kind of like my plan anyway. Um, so during this time, um, obviously one of my, one of my mentors, Dan, um, I'd like kind of had a lot of contact with him. I was joining a lot of his training videos and stuff like that or, or webinars. I used um, to meet Dan a couple of days ago. You did what? Uh, Dan was on the podcast a couple of days ago. Oh, I was he? Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So, um, so your viewers know who he is then. <laughs> um, yeah. So, or listeners, I should say. Um, so yeah. Um, he basically he rung me one day and so I think now this is around like the end of July so okay hang on I, I've missed a bit so, sorry <laughs> um so around the end of July I think I started to do the first little bit of like looking for work like I had sales that were coming in the business was growing but I didn't want to get to the point where I didn't have any marketing budget that I couldn't keep that growth so I was like okay let me have a look see if I can get um some kind of part-time work just to keep keep me moving forwards with this and at that stage you know this whole like online business digital marketing world was still quite new to me I'd only been in it for like a year and so when I, when I went online to look for jobs, I didn't want to look at anything that I'd done in the past because it didn't, I wasn't connecting to that anymore. I, I couldn't really do the like yoga teaching because again, the location, like I, people had to know where I was going to be if I was going to teach them yoga. Um, and at that stage, I hadn't thought of doing it online. I mean, this is how crazy this world has been that like now all yoga teachers are online. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so I started looking for something that would have used my new skills. And of course, when I looked, I just, cause these were new skills to me. I didn't feel that confident around them. And I wasn't convinced that I could actually apply for some of these jobs and, you know, actually get the job. So I kind of had this like half, half assed attempt of like looking for jobs and then kind of being like, Oh, like, what who am I kidding like you know again the self-limiting beliefs coming up um 
So I just kind of put it to one side because I was like, it's okay, I've still got time. Like, I don't have to worry about this yet. Um, and then I kid you not, it was the next day that I got a message from Dan saying, oh, can we have it? Like, have you got a time to have a chat later? And my immediate reaction was, oh my God, what have I done wrong? <laughs> I literally was like, oh God, I must have done something wrong in my marketing or because it was just unusual for him to reach out to like want to talk to me, you know, it's like, what's, what's this all about? Anyway, I get on the call with him later that afternoon and he basically says to me that his assistant is moving on to other things and they're having a bit of a reshuffle with his team and they've got some gaps they need to fill and do I want a job? And I was just like, oh, like, what? <laughs> because it, again, it was like, it just landed in my lap. It was like using all of the new skills that I was learning, I would have been able to keep using them and learn and grow even more. And I was basically like being offered a job with someone who'd been a huge inspiration to me and, you know, I was incredibly inspired by. Um, so it's like I couldn't even have imagined a job that good, you know, landing in my lap. And I didn't even have to update my CV to, <laughs> to get it, you know, like, and I was just gobsmacked. Um, and the funny thing is that after I started, so obviously I said yes, and I started working with Dan and hit Scrap for 95. Um, and after that, it was, it was a little while after I then got one of my largest sales in my business. I, I got a black sale, well, it was called a black sale back then. Um, and um, yeah, just like, so like, you know, the business was kind of taking off as well. But it was in that moment that I realized I've actually got what I came here for, which is the location freedom, because the job I had was strapped the nine to five, you know, was a remote position nobody like well everybody in that team works from home or wherever they are as long, you know as long as they've got their laptop and, and wi-fi connection so like earlier this year i spent a month and, and i'm feel incredibly grateful that i got to do this um before covid and everything but i spent a month in australia in february because I could still work when I was over there. I went over there for some SFM events and a lot of people came over or came to the events just for like the week or, you know, 10 days. And I ended up staying there for a whole month and, um, you know, can, was able to continue doing my work for Dan. Um, and uh, yeah, it's funny because I then, you know, I, I did actually start to lose a little bit of passion for affiliate marketing after that stage. And I, and for a while I didn't really understand why, but then I realized, well, because I'd already had, I already got what I wanted, you know, I, I, um, I got the location freedom and that was my main driver. Um, and, um, yeah, so this year has been really more, um, I think from the beginning of this year, I've been on a path of trying now to find something that is really more connected to like my passions and and my purpose and i i did a coaching accreditation earlier this year because i feel much more connected to a kind of online business where i'm actually i i like i want to connect a bit more with people and i coaching for me as you know it's just so so powerful um and like helping people to have like breakthroughs and stuff is so amazing because I, I basically did a bit of coaching when I worked for Scrap the 9 to 5 for some of um, some of like Dan's members and I loved it and so I started to kind of look at that and consider that for, for my own business and then in April I, I actually left Scrap the 9 to 5 because I I just decided that I, I'd kind of learned everything that I could learn there. There wasn't really any more growth available for me, not at, not at this time anyway. Um, and so I left Scrap the 9 to 5. And again, I, like, this is another thing. Like, I didn't know where I was going. And most people would think I'm insane because this happened during the first lockdown, you know. So, like, people are losing their jobs and 
like anyone who has a job they can work from home on the internet like is obviously incredibly grateful for that job right now but I it for me it had got to the point where I I needed to leave because I, I needed that growth again and I'm never happy in any situation where I'm not growing um, so I quit my job again not knowing what was going to happen where I was going to go what I was going to do this vague idea that I was going to do um, a coaching accreditation and you know something uh, like maybe something would happen with that but no grand plans or anything and five days later I had a phone call from another member of SFM who just launched earlier this year her own coaching business um, the Rebellious Business Network with um, Cordelia Kate and she basically rung me and was like I heard that you're available and I I'm like I'm looking for someone to help me because my coaching business is is basically starting to grow and it's like more than she can cope with and so I ended up getting offered this job where um again like no CV no um you know haven't had to apply for a job or anything like that and I ended up having massive growth you know getting exactly what I wanted and in the coaching area so I you know I, I help her with all sorts of things but part of my role is is coaching as well um and, coaching sorry what'd you say this is business coaching yeah it's business coaching and um I mean I focus mostly on the mindset stuff and Cordelia does the strategy so she um yeah she does the kind of like traditional business strategy coaching and then when anyone's struggling with any mindset issues like that's where I come in and it's been incredible because from this business she launched it literally at the beginning of lockdown she'd been doing a little bit of coaching before that but just a handful of people and then she launched the rebellious business network I think it was in March and it was about um, a month or so ago when she reached six figures with, with that business and it's just grown enormously and we now have another member um, on our team as well. So um, yeah, I don't know, yeah, that's, that's basically where I am today. <laughs> um, funnily enough, I am gonna reach out to Cordelia and uh, see if she'll do an interview on here. Um, <laughs> based on what's happened for her over the last few months, I think it's really exciting. Um, and fair play to her because she's a mother of three young children and used to be a nurse so it's you know it's amazing um you missed out Thailand I remember you were in living out in Thailand for a while oh, yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah that was during the time when I was building my SFM business that was just before I met you so I I obviously found SFM uh kind of July 2018 and at that time I went fully focused like 100% I'm I'm on this I didn't uh, I, I didn't have any other work or distractions and um, I decided because I I'm not a fan of the English winter and um, it's actually like I think I had four or five years in a row where I was not in the UK for winter um, so yeah last year and this year is uh, tricky <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so I went over to Thailand and, um, and just was living over there for about four or five months over the winter and working on my business. And yeah, it's really funny because it was my very first SFM event and I met two guys on that day. Like there are hundreds of people at these events, right? And you don't have time to talk to everybody. And two of the people that I met that day were also going to Thailand in October, which was exactly the same, but within about a week or 10 days of the date that I was arriving. And we all ended up on the same island in Thailand, all of us working on our SFM business and also, you know, just having fun in Thailand. So yeah, I was there like, that winter and then I flew from Thailand and came to San Diego which was where I met you. Yeah because yeah, I remember you talking about it and talking about how cheap it was to live out there and it was really uh, at that time I was like oh I quite like the sound of that you know but um, yeah. having still got a son at home although he he did leave and went to London last year but with lockdown he's come back um, 
who knows who knows but then I've now got my partner Matt so that's like another you know what you said yeah. you know if you've got a partner it keeps you somewhere yeah so we shall see but well Alex I mean I knew some of your story um I mean we've talked about it over red wines and gins so some of it's hazy as well so that was a great refresher for me it's amazing what um it's just amazing the journey you've been on I, I don't know whether you really fully appreciate that it really is yeah. um and uh it just shows you what's possible because you know you were in the rat race and then a comment from a friend sort of gave you that inspiration to think yeah this isn't right and that gave you the inspiration then to to go on and do everything that you did thereafter and um and it just yeah it just sounds amazing and, and i always like to i mean we're, we're at the hour i always like to finish these interviews by saying to yourself um if you could give any words of wisdom um, to somebody that might be sat there unhappy in a, in a career or unhappy in some part of their life or whatever and not quite knowing how to get out of it or not quite knowing what the step would be what what do you think would be a, an easy way for somebody to start making a change for themselves yeah um i think the thing is that you just have to take the leap and you know it's when you're in that stage of being really unhappy with the situation that you're in that the motivation can be the highest you know to make the change but it's only the fear that holds you back it's the fear that stops you fear of the unknown but when you take the leap you open up possibilities to a whole nother world that you didn't have uh, that you weren't open to before like every time i've quit a job every time i've you know, traveled somewhere new. I've never known what's going to happen. You can't know what's going to happen. But if you take the step, you actually open up to possibilities that something amazing can happen. Mm. So yeah, the only advice I can give you really is just, just literally take the leap and don't be afraid if you don't have all the answers, if you don't know, like it doesn't matter. You don't need to have all the answers because each step that you take will reveal the next step and that's all if you look at my journey that's all it's been it's been one step has led to the next has led to the next and i could not have said you know all those years ago that i would be sitting here doing what i'm doing now there's no way i could have predicted that but i'm incredibly grateful that i am so yeah, yeah. okay that's perfect well, thank you so much for your time. Um, if people want to find out a little bit more about Alex, where could they find you, Alex? Um, oh, everything's kind of a bit on hold at the moment while I figure out my new direction. Um, but I'm on Instagram, um, Alex Franklin Coaching. So maybe follow Alex me there. Alex Franklin Coach what? Alex Franklin Coaching. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, yeah, follow me on Instagram and um, that's probably where I'll update as I, as I figure out what, what I'm doing and as things evolve. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you again. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. And, thank you. Uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, take care, lovely.